Marshall, the man whose idea this rally was... Over the past 25 years, religious activists have been working to elect anti-choice candidates to local, state, and federal positions. Based on their moral convictions, these officials then propose legislation which restricts access. The idea that life begins at conception is a particular theological idea. It's a belief. We have states that are they're passing into their laws that are theological just belief that life. Have their religious beliefs uh, passed into civil law. For me, for uh, other Protestants, for Jews, for Unitarians, for uh, atheists, for Buddhists, for Muslims, in this, for all the, the wide variety of uh, religious beliefs we have in this country, now we have a, an infringement, an infraction of the idea of freedom of and from religion. Among the most influential forces behind these new laws is the Catholic hierarchy. Within church membership, however, there's a clear split. According to a Gallup survey, more than 80% think that most abortion services should remain legal. Some of those who disagree with the Vatican's position formed Catholics for a free choice. There is such a residual respect for religion in the country and such a, 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 and a belief that religious leaders don't lie, religious leaders don't play politics. And over the past 10 years, as the bishops saw that the abortion issue would move from the federal arena to the state arena, the bishops established, and in cases where they already existed, beefed up statewide lobbying offices in 28 states in the United States. So I always had this profound sense of sadness at the way in which the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church has invested so much of its power and authority on this issue in the political world that it has denied itself the opportunity to speak from a pastoral perspective. Another way in which the Catholic Church exerts its influence is by using punitive measures against people with whom it disagrees. This woman was the chief administrator of a women's health clinic in Texas, which provided a full range of services, including adoption and abortion. She was threatened with excommunication from the Catholic Church when she refused to abandon her position on this issue. I came in to focus with the media, speaking uh, the pro-choice um, aside and, and defending our clinic and defending the patients and uh, their right to choose and their right to have access to these services. In one of those interviews, I was asked what religion I practiced and uh, I of course said that I was a pro-choice Catholic. This special interest group petitioned the bishop and said, you cannot allow this woman to uh, publicly state that she's a pro-choice Catholic. That just can't be done. And sure enough, uh, two months down the road, I received my first letter of warning saying that I was in jeopardy of excommunicating myself automatically. And that as my bishop, that he was warning me and uh, giving me uh, information regarding the evils of abortion. All involved in the deliberate and successful effort to eject a non-viable fetus from the mother's womb incur excommunication. The most frightening thing about my excommunication was that had it been another time, I would have been burned at the stake. I wouldn't have had a piece of paper to tell me you're no longer a Catholic and you can no longer be buried in the Catholic Church, or you can no longer receive communion. But I would have been burned at the stake. But it's not gonna silence me. And I'm gonna continue to speak. And I, I want to be that force. I want to be that person that says, but we are affected by this. 
women come to clinics like reproductive services and clinics, other abortion providers across this country with the most incredible circumstances. And we treat them with respect and we give them the quality medical care that they deserve. Over the last decade, a religious minority has promoted a concept that equates being religious with being anti-abortion. In truth, people of many faiths support a woman's right to choose. This United Methodist minister works in the Los Angeles area. He grew up in Mexico where he saw women die from illegal abortions. There are some religious people that oversimplify the issue and they seem to claim the, the, the high moral ground and, and say that uh, the rest of us who disagree with them are not moral. The, the more you narrow the options, the less moral you are. Uh, I, I just think freedom is absolutely essential for moral and ethical decisions to be made. I believe in a loving God and I believe that all of the religions of the world primarily have as a, as, a, as a task to convey the idea that God is loving, that we have a loving, caring, forgiving God that will understand better than any one of us the specific reasons why a woman finally decides to go and have an abortion. In this synagogue, People from many faiths have gathered to honor those who suffered before legal abortions were available. To those who were taken blindfolded to a hotel room or a deserted warehouse, to those who could not afford a legal abortion, to those whose doctors were prevented by law from counseling them, to those who ended up in an emergency room hemorrhaging, to those who ended up sterile. Part of why I got involved in this particular service and even I think the larger issue of the religious statement is religion serves as a vehicle for memory. We argue these political issues or even the theological issues of, of abortion without remembering that real people are involved and not just the real people in the present. He found out that I was doing this and uh, called me into his office. It was um, a late afternoon and I was in the middle of assisting a twin delivery it was incredibly excited and we were waiting for the second twin and uh, I was called down to his office um, I walked in and he had me sit down and immediately he started screaming at me he told me that he was very much against abortion and this is a quote he said who do you think you are as a third year medical st student deciding what your education should be I felt like saying back to him who do you think you are to let your religious views and your personal views interfere with my education? A cartoon book of crude jokes about abortion doctors was mailed anonymously to more than 3,000 medical students across the country. Refusing to be intimidated, a group of them formed Medical Students for Choice, an organization committed to increasing the availability of abortion training. We were going around the country to all these different meetings that, of other organizations where we knew students would be. At one place we had to use ironing boards. I had to haul my ironing board to the hotel and set up with tablecloths over it to, to, to have a space. To put, just, we just had to put a few things down, put our petitions, um, sign-up sheets. All the other booths were kind of like not much was going on, but students were swarming around our booth, around our ironing boards. Grassroots efforts are succeeding and have led to more than 100 chapters nationwide. As medical students, we demand this training. We absolutely think that it would be irresponsible medicine to not include abortion training in obstetrics and gynecology programs. After meeting the challenge of getting their medical training, these young doctors join the ranks of those who face hardships every day. In Mississippi, one of the few in-state providers is battling a barrage of legislation aimed at forcing him to quit his practice. He continues, however, because of what he saw when abortion was illegal. I was in medical school before Roe versus Wade. I saw women come through the emergency room who had had back alley abortions, botched abortions with gas gangrene, perforation of the uterus, uh, sept sepsis. Um, and once you see one picture like that, it remains in your mind forever. 
And I promised myself if I could ever get the opportunity to change that and make abortion safer than I would.